But when he's in, when he's in person, he does. Not the summer. Evening, Somers, and welcome to our town board meeting work session, Thursday, October 7th, 2020. Uh, I'd like you to stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And would Eagle Scout candidate Simon Daly lead us in the pledge? To the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Simon. And be seated. Okay, first our, on our agenda tonight is public comment. I'll make a motion to open public comment. Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone here for public comment? This is an opportunity for residents to voice any opinion or concerns they have. That is not an item on our agenda. So seeing and hearing none, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing, uh, public comment. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And just for the record, uh, Rick, nothing on the Okay. That's right. We are hybrid, having a hybrid meeting, which means you can call us and come in through um, the Zoom as well. Okay. Uh, very briefly, and it's a shame I have to keep giving COVID updates. You would hope this would be over by now. But, um, you know, Somers is... Um, doing well in comparison to our um, neighboring communities. Um, since the onset of um, the pandemic, there's been 2,349 positive COVID cases in the town of Somers. That's roughly 11% of our population um, uh, have been infected. As of today, we've had one new case we had no new cases yesterday. Um, we have 36 active positive cases in our community um, at the moment. Um, some other uh, good news is 79% of our eligible population has been vaccinated, at least one, one shot. So, um, you know, we're gonna keep on doing what we're doing, uh, masking when appropriate, social distancing um, and hand washing. Um, kind of a, a side benefit of us practicing these, um, these procedures has been, you know, I've talked to some of the medical profession and they're saying they're not seeing anybody with colds. They're, they're, they're not signing scripts for antibiotics. So really, what, what does that say about us? If we had listened to our mothers in the first place, <laughs> wash your hands, sneeze into your uh, on a handkerchief, um, all these things we're being forced to do now is going to make us healthier in the long run, let's hope. Okay, um, it's moving along on the agenda. Number hey, item. The, yeah. the so it in Westchester, the numbers as, as well as in West in Somers seem to have peaked. Am I correct? I mean, in the calls, uh, I've been on those calls with uh, Latimer, right? So, uh, did, did they have any explanation for that? Same thing happened in, in England that they hit it and then it went down. and and there was no explanation. They thought it would keep going up, and then it didn't with, with the Delta variant. Uh, have you come across just out of curiosity of any explanation for that? Well, they're not really sharing like um, age or sex um, or race or anything like that. So mm. it's hard to glean, you know, what the reasons. Yeah. You know, we, we had, we, we were going on a downward trend. There was a little bit of a surge. Right. But now the kids are back at school and, um, you know, we're seeing it leveling yeah. off and, you know, yeah. zero to one new case. I think, I think it's a, a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So they yeah, offered saw, you anything to sorry. explain that, I guess. I saw something on the, the news this morning about like the New York city schools. And I think they said they've had 330 cases, but I mean, how many millions of students do they, they have? They have a million. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's a, a ridiculous low number. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's good okay. Stuff. Okay. So the, this evening um, we have we're going to have a discussion about the Somers Business Historic Sewer District. I mean, last week we're talking about our 
a water district, but this week is um, about a sewer district um, and a possible partnership with uh, North Salem. And this evening we have Supervisor Warren Lucas with us and um, a member of their planning board. Okay, so Ms. Kearns is with us from there. <laughs> well, he is our engineer. He's right behind you. Yes. Well, well, my engineer is here, sure. So, um, yeah, let me uh, preface this by, you know, and Warren, if you're comfortable and you're vaccinated. I have my booster shot. Yeah, I've, I've got three as well. So yeah, we're, well, I, I found out today that means we're older than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to disclose that. Yeah, well, okay. So uh, just to, to preface this a bit, um, you know, Warren has uh, an issue, a uh, septic issue in Croton Falls um, business district. Um, he's looking for a solution. Um, I know that uh, North Salem has investigated uh, their own little uh, on-site system. Um, but what's very attractive is Heritage Hills, which is a, a sewer treatment plant with uh, capacity. Um, as uh, many here would um, know, the we fought off we fought off. Um, a developer from out of out of the county actually wanting to buy capacity at the at the plant sewer plant, and we were successful in being able to say the town board through our uh, uh, incorporation of that sewer treatment plant, the town board decides or has an uh, an opinion on um, when when and whom we extend the, our district to. So um, this town board felt that allowing sewage from outside of Somers and outside the county was not something that uh, this, this town board would entertain. That was also huge too. Yes. That, that was a gigantic thing. Yeah. That was like a 400,000 gallon per day set aside. Which would have precluded the use of the facility for other projects right. within our town. So yeah. yeah, that was kind of a no brainer. Okay. so. I mean, with that said, we have a neighboring municipality right. that has a septic problem. Um, and Warren and I have been discussing this for quite some time. Um, I didn't want to hear from him while we, our lake community sewers were being discussed. We were going to um, kind of get over that hurdle, um, which, which we have. And now we're refocusing, you know, our efforts on our historic district, our other lake community, Lake Purdy's. And, uh, you know, with us this evening is uh, uh, Gina Arena uh, from Lake Purdy's. And uh, she's been working with that community to garner support for uh, possible sewer connections. So, you know, at this, at this point, um, invited uh, Warren, and I see that his town engineer is here as well. Um, <clears throat> Maybe you can uh, get on on Mike Warren, introduce yourself, and let's begin the uh, discussion. So this is a discovery and an introduction. To yes, us, right. So yeah, we haven't seen so, this. We haven't heard this. Okay. So uh, obviously, my name is Warren Lucas, supervisor over in North Salem, and uh, we've been talking about this probably since sometime in 2019. Um, we met with the uh, folks from uh, Heritage, and this, this is when Heritage still owns it. Now Zeus owns the thing, uh, owns the uh, plant to a certain extent. Uh, Heritage is still involved. Uh, we have a um, very minor amount of sewage. It's it's over 10,000 gallons, not a lot. It's about, it's it's under 20. I think the thing that you had before with Putnam was either 300 or 330,000, as I remember the number. Um, when when uh, New York City came in and uh, condemned all the property, they condemned. I, I, in fact, in, on Back Street along some of the areas in town, I don't even own the sidewalks. They own right up to the buildings. So uh, there's not a lot of land over there to do much with. I, we reached out to the MTA. Of course, that's in Somers too, but putting it under their parking lot, some of the water, if we could figure something out. And they said, of course not. 
Um, we looked on the back lot that's actually their property. Uh, we rent the parking lot in Croton Falls from them for about 50, 60,000 a year. And um, that will take maybe 10,000 gallons, won't take, won't, won't take enough. Uh, so uh, uh, anyway, we've, we've looked at a couple of different sites. Um, there is one further down in Croton Falls that we purchased some property. Uh, the uh, soils are reasonably good, but uh, that would not be our, our first choice. In talking to the folks at um, at Heritage a while ago, I haven't talked to the Zeus folks, although Cynthia has met with all of them about uh, with those and the Heritage folks, what, about a month ago, a few weeks ago, you know, uh, and went over everything. Um, and in, in uh, some work that Jim Hahn had done a while ago, uh, and by the way, George Palmer is here from Hahn Engineering. He's the uh, Hahn Engineering is a town engineer. Welcome, George. Uh, he thought the meeting was probably 7.30, which is our, or actually you thought the, the first discussion was going to go a little bit longer. So did I, I was going to show up late and I said, I figured it better not. Um, so what we were originally looking at, is there any place over there that would work? And, you know, as I said, we, we chatted about this before and originally for us, it was Greenbrier. There's an eight inch main there. It's easy enough for us to get there. It's up a hill, but that, that required pump station anyway. And, and, um, we floated that with the county in some of the NWWC, the Northern Westchester Watershed Consortium meetings, which uh, Rick, Rick chairs. Um, and we gave him some of the prices stuff. I have some things here from 2019. It's more conceptual. And then talking to Rick uh, a couple of weeks ago, he said, well, you know, I preferred if you came up 202 with a main instead of up, um, Butler. Greenbrier, Butlerville Road, Greenbrier. Actually, it was out to Annisville, and it, it, it's changed a couple of times. Right. And it doesn't, you know, I can go a certain distance with the money that we think we're going to be able to pull together. I, I don't care which way it is, as long as there's something at the other end of the pipe when I get there. <laughs> uh, and I know you were looking at some, either some water system changes or some things of that nature that, uh, you know, for the water system and maybe digging up the roads anyway. So Warren, all these solutions require, are, uh, have Heritage Hills as the, essentially the, the yeah. sewer. We've looked at, I mean, Reed Farm, Cynthia's, uh, there's a couple of things that Cynthia has looked at. The play. Right now we're doing a, more of a master plan where, we're, where the town master plan was done, comprehensive plan was done in 2011. We're updating it. We're focusing a little bit on quote falls. Obviously, there's a lot of work we have to do there. Um, but uh, we still have cesspools there and septic tanks and uh, the cesspools and septic tanks. Some of them, their tile fields are under, under the roads. Mm -hmm. And most people don't even know where they were, so... Anybody that has a problem with them, they, they, have a, they have a serious problem. I have businesses that can't open during the week or on weekends anyway. They close a couple of the wet uses. Uh, the pizza place is one just because he, he doesn't have sufficient capacity in the, in the septic tanks that he has. Um, so anyway, we're, we've been looking at that for a while. Uh, the Croton Falls project is actually on the list for the second tier projects for uh, the Northern Westchester Watershed Consortium. There is a grant process going on right now, November 22nd. You have to have the, uh, the stuff in. It started, they announced it September 22nd. I did call up the EFC, Environmental Facilities Corp, and ask them if we could apply if we were not in the IUP for the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, the CWSRF. And they said, no, but you can apply for WIA for sewer without being in the IUP. To get in the IUP, you had to have filed I think by June 16th and next year it's by July 16th or something along there. It's one of those dates. Uh, it was interesting that they announced that after they came after, in September that you had to be retroactively in it to, to, to join that program. So there, there is money out there. Um, as you know, the county money we're talking about is WQIP money, water quality improvement program money. Uh, they gave us 39 million and some odd change in 1997. Some of that is uh, money that Somers has been looking at, I think 10 million. And uh, there's, there's, there's still money left. They're still getting about 400. I think they told us the other day, 424,000 a year in interest. So they must have it in a longer term, <laughs> longer term something because it sounds like 2% or so they're getting. Warren, just in that, I'm told that, does that interest go into that account? Or it's taken somewhere else. Is no, it, it stays it's there. Added but the county, to the amount. The county has their own. You know, the county has their own septic Something. program. They just announced and they pulled. I think it was three point nine million out of the fund for that. Uh, money's come out for a variety of different things, but it's usually something that uh, 
the so Northern Westchester Watershed related. Consortium agrees to. I think every town got 175,000. I think you're spending it on your salt shed. Right. We bought a vacuum truck for, I mean, the vacuum truck was I think 223 grand, but part of it was paid for with that. So the money's getting used for other things. And uh, we did use some of it for Peach Lake Sewer District. Uh, in fact, it, it's generated, the 39 million has generated well over 60 million over the years. Yeah, it seems to be a mysterious number. It's, is that the number, 60? Uh, the number was up to 60 million. Yeah. 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 For a while, they were getting 8% interest in the good old days. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Very old and nobody days. touched the money. So originally, it was Somers, uh, Bedford, North Castle, and Yorktown each had 10 million. And they have sole governance over that money? The uh, so so the way it kind of works, board. and obviously Rick knows because he's he's the chairman. But uh, the committee kind of discusses it. And the committee is us, right? You know, and uh, the county obviously has some input. And we discuss exactly what we'd like, and they obviously have a little bit of control. But once they once they decide that something is uh, is something that could be funded, everybody agrees on it. There was a, a list of projects. I mean, one of the issues is Purdy's isn't in the list of projects, so. That came up at the last meeting. I think Sabrina from Newcastle brought that up. Um, but once that happens, uh, even if the county approves it, they go to the DEP and the DEP says, yes, that's that's okay. You can spend it on that particular project. And once that happens, you put the plans together, go down the county and get the money. It's never 100% of it, so you're always looking for other funds. But uh, obviously, it's a, it's a chunk of money. But you used your $10 million, right? I used $10 million on Peach Lake, on Peach Lake. Uh, back in 2012. All right. So for the public certifications, the ten, we have $10 million, but... Well, I don't know what you have. Use it, right? I don't know what you have. It's 10. But there's there's money there I, I off the top of my head. Uh, a couple of years ago, I requested about 4.8 for Chrome Falls, and that was agreed on by everybody. And that was the second tranche or, right. or so. One of the things that's happened, and we've gone back to David Warren, who's the commissioner, uh, assistant commissioner in the DEP, because we said, look, we need more money in this fund. And he said, well, I'm not where well, I'm not even going to go to my commissioner and ask for more money until you spend That's the money right. we gave you in 1997. And so well, we already spent that. He says, well, you got to spend the interest too. Um, so we, we totally expect that once that money's gone, we can pressure the city to go back and provide more because all the things that we're doing are really, you know, for their water quality. One of the interesting things about Croton Falls and the reasons it actually works, it's a glacial sand pile. And as long as you don't have a wet use that has grease in the, uh, you know, that doesn't have a good grease trap or something, uh, you you put water in the ground, it disappears. I had, I had a leak in the Crumb Falls water system. It was 20,000 gallons a day under a house. And it ran for a year. We couldn't find it. Somebody had turned a curb cock on that had nothing on the end of it. We didn't even realize it was there. So the, the water just disappeared. However, when you have some a wet use and there's a little grease in it, it fills in kind of the sand and then, the system just they they tend to stop working. So so, so Warren, you mentioned conversations with the EFC mm -hmm. and and we are funds. Yeah. Um, we had it discussed, and uh, you know S Steve Robbins, our town and junior, was with us tonight as well. Um, that should we venture further into this potential project, um, doing a joint application. Well, they have special applications. I'm not sure if yeah, that's under we or CWSRF, but it's for multiple towns. So, so Rick, is they have special thought, funding for multiple. Is the thought we go from here down and you come from there up? And we well, I think for, I, uh, something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, at the end of the day, the county money is somewhat fungible. Whether you get it, I get it, or we get more of it, or you get some of it. You know, it's it's uh, it's WQIP money, and. Uh, I would not come that far up. It's it's more expensive to go along 202 than it is along a you know Butlerville Road. It's just it just is. I think it's about 50 percent more to go on a state road, mm -hmm. and I'm familiar with that from uh, from the work we did over in uh, Peach Lake. Yeah. So I mean the conversation. I mean when it comes down to brass tax, is Warren would take you know his sewer line on its travels to the Heritage Hill sewer plant, right? And if he comes past enough of our properties that would be able to connect, or we continued, obviously we would have to continue wherever he stopped. And that's what Steve and uh, North Salem Engineering are talking about. Oh, okay, what's, what's what's that that breakoff point? And you know, maybe we could hear you know a little from them, Warren, or if you 
you know, and, I, and like I said, if we have Gina Arena here, we, we are looking and she's looking at interest to connect Lake Purdy's to a sewer district. Yeah. So, so, but the thought is, do we come down from the north or do we come up from the south? Do, do you have numbers on that? Uh, just, I have just, estimates from two thousand. I have yeah, more here. I mean, that's what, so some of that money for you is cheaper to go to Butler, but. It's cheaper, but it's an extra one point. I forget the exact distance, 1.2 miles, one point. I don't care if I go up Butler or I come okay, down so to a so. You, you reduce and, the distance, and, yeah. but at a higher cost. What, what would, and you'd come would down, higher. and the advantage to Somers is on that. I assume I'm, I'd be going along in front of Butlerville and Annisville and Stone Lee or whatever the names of the yeah, roads Stone are, to, Road. to a point at which I guess if, if, we, if, we, if it was designed properly, um, other people there could hook in. Would we have to form a separate sewer district for that? Well. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to, yeah right? sure. Probably North Salem yeah. slash. Oh well, no, well I don't. Well, know. Yeah, that's, know, that's why I'm not quite sure. One, you, know, know. you put yeah. it in, we create a sewer district. I mean, maybe that's getting ahead too much, but that's just the, my uh, detailed mind goes to. So, Roland, uh, a question arose. Okay, oh, where is Roland? If we got into this Roland, Roland. partnership with North Salem, would would it be a one sewer district? Would it be a North Salem no, sewer district? And North, uh, uh, North Salem. Yeah, and yeah. so, well, so North Salem would form a sewer district within its boundaries, and. Somers would extend the existing district that it has, which operates as a paper district, down to the boundary line with North Salem. The question is, who's going to own the, the, the transmission main? Is it each of the municipalities within their respective boundaries, or is it Heritage Hills? You were, did they say they would own it or yeah, you the, tell me the last proposition they would own it, but yeah, coming up here, right. When we were talking, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they build the people that need to pay for it, but, but the question of they own it, if you come yeah, up to the mic or yeah. Yeah. Uh, the question is, can they own it immediately for getting for grant money? money? The grant money is going to the uh, two towns and the town. See, that's what's there. different here this time is that the, the extension in Somers and whatever North Salem bills would be built essentially with uh, municipal money, whether it's federal, state, or local. And I don't see how Heritage Hills can own title to the conveyance system since it is all grant money. So this may be a little different, but I don't think you're going to resolve it without heritage hills in the room. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, they actually, their contract put it in their town and our contracts put the thing in our town. So uh, Roland, when you say heritage hills, you mean Suez? No, it, it, when, when Heritage Hills sold what they sold to Suez, Heritage Hills kept the expansion rights. That's right. So okay. whatever the negotiation is that North Salem will have to have with uh, the Heritage Hills operation, that will be with the, the people we know, Keith Sorensen and company. They kept the expansion rights. The so Somers the ability to consent, as you know, when Suez came into to Somers, we uh, amended the gray area of whether or not you needed to consent to every addition to the plant. And now it's black and white language and you definitely have the right of consent. So your, your ability here is to consent to the extension to allow North Salem to enter, 
but it'll be North Salem that will be negotiating with Heritage Hills. And I think uh, when we talk, I talked to Keith a couple of years ago, again, this is probably 2000, earlier in 2019, but for every 10,000 gallons, there's just an upfront payment of $200,000. And then, you know, from there, it, you know, there's other, other bills and stuff that they would charge people, but there's a, a cost to, to just buy into the district. So they will negotiate for the capacity that they will sign up to use. Yeah. But, yeah as I well, said, I might use, we would have to the ne negotiate the consent, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you need 300,000, it's 10,000, it's 3 million bucks. It's not. Well, when the engineers get up here, it'd be interesting to know what the capacity uh, proportions are right now. Yeah, I think the plant's a 770,000 gallon capacity yes. plant. They had about 300, 360,000 okay. gallons left. And you would be 10,000 more, which I, is I'd be, negligent. Well, I need to buy 20 because I'm probably 11. You know, I'm right around that area. Uh, so they don't sell 11. They sell 10, 20, 30, oh, 40. I got gotcha. you. I didn't understand. Okay. Now, and you're here because it seems to North Salem, you have no other options. Up I don't there. have you, any other good out options. Of things? Is that really what's happening? I don't, yeah, there, there's no land around the hamlet that I own. All right. The, there is some land behind Primavera that we purchased, but uh, that is not, it's, it's, uh, it's right adjacent to wetlands. And um, it could take 11,000 gallons. Uh, but it's not really optimal for that. Um, there's about five acres of, uh, I forget the soils in the property, Broadloom, I forget the name, but th there, was, there was a soil that's okay for, for septics, but it's uh, out of the 12 acres, I think seven acres is, uh, is considered wetlands or wetland buffer anyway. And what you're currently doing or what the people there, the businesses there are doing just because of the nature of the effluent is creating a problem it gets into the reservoir in about five seconds <laughs> right through the sand and, and they're pumping their septics out well i have one guy you can see it in here i think primavera which is a little further down they pumped it out 137 times so you know if you, <laughs> most of them are pumping it all the time and they know yeah, they're, they're like they know they're they're folks like a microcosm of what happened you know? in katona so we you know we've been looking at this for some time as i said rick and i have talked about this and i know anthony you and i briefly talked about it and stuff and uh it would be nice. You know, if you go back, I know uh, um, when we were talking about Shannon Rock, I was president of Wilmo in 2016 and I was, um, you know, down with Mike Spano a lot with his barge problem and uh, over in Peekskill and stuff. And at one point in time over years ago, it was uh, effluent from the affluent. Right. right? That's what they call it. And, and we talked through all of that. I spent a lot of time talking to the county and, and those guys and they find everybody finally agreed. You send it to where it makes the most sense. And I know mm -hmm. over in, is it Lincoln Dale or Shannon Rock, you have an eight inch, you have a main right there. All right. And uh, so I think they finally allowed that. And I know when uh, Tom Snow called me up, he's a DEC and he said, uh, I have 1.3 million. Can you use it on Croton Falls? I said, I'm not there yet. Could you give it a Somers? And I think he called you up and said, I have 1.3 million for you for Shannon Rock or yeah. whatever. All the, all the financing was there. So I, I, I've been trying to be as helpful as possible. This isn't mm -hmm. just a one-way street, but uh, right. so, you know, one of the benefits, I think if we approach the county together, it, it may, may even help you a little bit. I don't know. They're pretty psyched on getting Croton Falls done at this point. Mm -hmm. So what's our next, what's our next? Oops. Florida's, I guess, right? Right, so by partnering with North Salem on this project, is there enough of a benefit to the town of Somers. Yeah, you know, we could just say we'll extend the district and let them take the shortcut and go up into a Greenbrier and connect. You know, um, that could be a good neighbor policy. But being in this job for as long as I have, the question is, and I have to come back to you, what's in it for the town of Somers? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what Warren and I are here to talk to you about. And maybe we can hear from the engineers. Um, you know, what's in it for Somers. We know what's in it for, you know, North Salem. They're going to save their, their business district, which is an admirable, admirable thing to do. Um, but we can be a piece of that solution. If in fact, you know, can they bring it down to you know, Stonehill road? Can they bring it down to 116? Well, here's that puts Lake Purdy's in play. Page nine here has um, 
it's the force main additional cost are required to go to Heritage Hills west of Somers Town Hall. I can't remember exactly where it goes to. It may just go right uh, opposite to Chico's. You have a main. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's it's an additional. You can see the savings. It's uh, one point eight million dollars savings by not going up Greenbrier. So you come down this way for one point eight million. And, uh, you know, there is additional cost. It's 13,200 feet. And so the additional cost right in the middle the table three, it's 2.375 million to come all the way up here as opposed to just dealing with it over there. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm not sure uh, exactly what uh, you folks are interested in doing. Um, well, so Rick, what we're saying is if we do that, then it, we can look at both um, Purdy's as well as the historic district. It yeah. tees it up, right? Right, okay. You know, obviously, I have interest in Purdy's also, so because I'm Purdy's is on the other side yes, of Lake you, Purdy's. <laughs> you have the other Purdy's. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is, New York City came in. They did it to Katona, maybe not so much to Somers, but when they came in and said, "Okay, all the houses can't be here. You got to move them all back up." I, I have a Hamlet of Purdy's, and you know, most of them are okay. They're working okay, but I have a few septics that they're just they're shot, and there's no expansion area. There's no nothing, and uh, you know. Nobody really likes nowadays. You figure out how to get them into the sewer. And that, that's where I am right now with the Croton Falls, quite frankly. Well, it seems to me like, I, yeah, I agree with you. We can be a good neighbor and help you out. Yeah. Well, I'm a nice guy, too. I so, think. You know. Well, we really like <laughs> Cynthia, actually. So just. Oh, OK. Well, that's why I asked Cynthia to come. Because <laughs> a lot of times people don't like me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But the question boom, becomes, boom. where are you going with that? Right? <laughs> uh, you know, what will our engineers and other people say, here's the, here's, you know, if you're going to do it, and I'm not opposed to that, of course, yeah. but then here's how we can leverage that, yeah. that will help. And that really becomes the issue, I think, here. Well, yes. For, for you, you, you would take the longer route. But I mean, the shorter route, but at a higher cost, and there's a break point. The shorter route would be there. a cheaper cost. For Less me. cost. Ultimately, it would be cheaper. I would be happy to go to Greenbrier. <laughs> okay. And I wouldn't but be. But seeing happy as I love Rick that much as I do, yeah, that's what I've been telling them. Yeah, I mean, we've been discussing the but if you take district and Purdy's for a while. So, I mean, to me, that makes sense to come up here and then. You, you yeah. Start, and, you know, when I say a main, also. right, I just put a main in from the school over to Peach Lake, and it's a three inch main. You know, you, when you're pumping sewage, you don't need a huge main. So a lot of that stuff would have to be sized appropriately to say, how big do we think this is going to end up being? How many homes are we going to get on it? You know, mm -hmm. a forced main is different than a gravity main. You can pump a lot of stuff through a fairly small pipe. Right, because you're pushing it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and I'm fairly familiar with Peach Lake at this point in time. I mean, I have pumps that'll pump 300 gallons a minute. So Warren, the, 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 it's pretty fast. Yeah, the additional monies to, to get it down to, Let's say the historic district. You talk. It's it's a cost differential of two point three million. Right. Yeah, that's to do everything right up to here. That, now th these are in two thousand nineteen numbers, and if you look, it says okay, uh, three hundred dollars a foot on two hundred two, and on a side on a town road would be two hundred dollars a foot. It's just you know it depends on the DOT and what okay, they require. Once again, you know you're a master at this. We're we're not too bad at, at it at ourselves, but you're ahead of us. We use other people's money to do this. You know, it's not taxpayer dollars. Well, ultimately, I mean, it's through, you know, yeah, different yeah. agencies. You know, my job, I wanted to expend our $10 million. The county wants to see that money gone. We want to use it. And if we can partner here yep. and use our $10 million, throw that in, do a joint application to the EFC and cover some of these costs, um, and the engineers can put this together and say, here's the package. And we have no, till November 22nd to get this done. Um, that's what I wanted. November 22nd to get the. Well, there's, they just the announced, the they announced on September 22nd <laughs> that the WIA, CWS, CWSRF and, and DWSRF grants are, are available, but right. they and have to be applied for by November 22nd. I'm sorry. I have no idea. How detailed. And how detailed. Oh, well, look, I, again, clean water state revolving fund, CWSRF, that's the main sewer one. You have to be in the intended use plan, which means there's a list of projects that they know about and it has a value and how many people. And we're not in that for sewers. I'm in it for water districts and stuff, mm -hmm. but not sewer. 
WIA grants, which is a water infrastructure, something, don't remember the other rest of the acronym. Um, they said you could apply for that. I don't know the, the you know, I don't know well, Steve, the details. Correct me if I'm wrong. We, we've applied for that in the past, haven't we? For yes. water or for sewer? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're, we're in that mix. Sorry, the, the town has, um, it's in the, the, the multi-year SRF for uh, sewer in various parts of the town, including the Business Historic Preservation District and over in Purdy's. Well, it's even better. Yeah, so we're... So the question, the question is, as part of that, could we also apply with you with the uh, with Croton Falls, seeing as we're coming up the same direction? And then the other thing is whether or not the county W, the DEP WQIP money can match this. Is that 80, 80, 20 or 60, 40? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a hundred percent. If you get a million bucks, you're really getting 60, 600,000 or 800,000. I can't remember the match. And mm -hmm. so what else can match that? So the, you, you know, at the end of the day, the goal is to have everything be able to match everything else. So you're using as minimal local money as possible. And then there's also, you know, the ARPA money, which can be used for any of the sewer stuff too. But the East of Hudson stuff, with all that interest, <clears throat> sort of our money and their- Well, you know, you have a bunch of other folks that are- Wanted to. Uh, yeah, Newcastle wants it, although I think thought their problems were addressed, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why we wouldn't look to run it up here to cover our two issues, which is also part of your issue, Purdy's, like you're saying, as well as, as, well as your- Well, uh, well Purdy's is not something- that, that's a that's a long term yeah. problem. Well, no, I know that's I, down the road, but yeah. you could run the one up here first. North Salem Purdy, Lake Purdy would be well. It gets very confusing, by the way, because uh, not everybody knows. I think it's the same zip code, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's really strange. I live there. Yeah. So you, yeah, it's it's a it gets a little strange when people say this is where I live, and especially when somebody somebody who was in trouble with with hurting somebody, and they kept on saying he was in. Uh, Purdy's. He was in North Salem. They didn't say Purdy's. Well, you're saying Purdy's. So I had to call that. I kept on calling Roy. I said, no, he lives in Lake Purdy's, not uh, Purdy's. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, they now you the can't park. It, you can't park in Purdy's, North Salem, but you I've, can still park. Uh, I've gotten uh, calls uh, from your constituents uh, lambasting me for that. Yes. You're so, welcome. It's uh, dangerous. You said about me. Thank you, not Tom. So I appreciate that. Side. Next time you come back in with the <laughs> stuff, I'm not coming to no anymore. park. <laughs> so okay. look, we, you know. Obviously, we, I've been on the town board for too long at this point. I've been on 30 years and uh, worked, you know, with everybody here for many, many different folks, different faces. But, uh, you know, you always try to work together to a certain extent. Yeah. And if it's especially if it's mutually beneficial. Um, and I really, this for me, I either go up there or come down here. My only interest is that if you're going to pick something that, you know, it's, it's really something that you think you can get done. Otherwise, I'm, I'm talking about running a pipe someplace where there's nothing at the end of it to catch. Gotcha. Catch the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I could get mine done in two years. I told the county that. They believe me. I mean, I, I probably can. It's going to take... Well, we, we have the same town attorney, by the way, so I keep on pointing at Roland up there, but uh, <laughs> at North Castle and probably five other towns in Western County. Can he back up what he's saying, Roland? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Roland he's knows laughing. I'm a geek with uh, sewer systems now, unfortunately. Yeah, he's he's good at what he does. Um, so, so, yeah. That's important. I mean, if look, phase one is getting the connection, right? And if you get Croton Falls on in two years and we're, we've got our business historic done in two years and we're, you know, look looking at engineering to get like Purdy's on or Stonehill Road or Ansville or Summit Lake, um, those all can be future phases. But what I'd like the engineers to kind of do is let's get a phase one together. You now, is it Lake Purdy's you know, and the Business Historic District? Um, you know, I know we are working on a, we have a POFA contamination issue here. Yep, so do we. So we're going to rip up a road to get a water connection anyway. So we're going to, that's the time to drop in a sewer line as well. I wonder if there would be any other money. We, we had a proposal, if you remember, years ago, $2 million for Lake Purdy's. Nothing really went with it. 
uh, that, to that collect stormwater retrofit. Right, right. I wonder if any of that would would come into play here, just to give us more money to 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 uh, to connect that part of the town in, which would I would think would be a good thing, and that the DEP would be in favor of. Um, if there's a way to do both, maybe and there's not. Will, I don't know. To, to well, I think here. what you need first is you need the people from Lake Birdies to want to be in it. I well, right, know. and we found out that's not always so easy. Yeah. No, you right. cannot. I don't want to offend any of the engineers, but everything to the engineers is black and white, right? So yeah. somebody says, how much is it going to cost? They're going to say, I don't know, but it could be as high as $5,000 a year, right? That's not what you want <laughs> no, to tell no, constituents no, when you don't know. <laughs> so I, I Peach Lake, it was within 10 minutes, I very politely asked my engineers to sit down and I handle the questions after that. Because a lot of this is, uh, is a certain amount of faith involved, right? You're going to try to get it done. You're going to try to find the money. And right now we don't know, but I'm going to come back to you when I find out and know the exact numbers. And if you want to shoot it, then that's fine. But I, I, you need to be able to kind of move through the process a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's, that's critical when you're selling it to the community, because unless they really know some of the hard numbers, uh, if they're making a decision right now, they're probably going to say no. Whereas if you can allow them to make the decision as you proceed and get more info, they'll usually go along with you. That's, that's what I found on mine. And I, well, we, we may have to have you come down to Lake Purdy's and do some uh, <laughs> talking over there for yeah. us. I know Gene has been there. I don't know what, how, how would they? Gina, if you want to come up to, to the mic. Yeah. And you can remove your uh, mask if you care to. I've been very busy, but that's okay. Thanks. Um, but I've been working on getting, I have a water slash sewer petition form because people are interested in both. And I've been getting signatures on these. So I think I have about close to 50 of people who are interested. There's a hundred, I believe it's still 189 properties in Lake Purdy's. Um, I've been very busy, so I haven't been able to go back out and get some more signatures, but um, I'm still working on it and people are still calling me and asking me um, if this, mm -hmm. if we're going to move forward, people are very interested. I think what would be beneficial is to have a meeting maybe at the Lake Purdy's clubhouse and let people, there's concerns. People have concerns. We all know that that's just the way human nature is. Mm -hmm. um, biggest concerns I hear are, are my taxes going to go up and how much? I think that's always the common question. Uh, the other thing I hear is people are concerned that any empty lots, all of a sudden now people can build on them. And I said, I don't necessarily, if they're in wetlands, it, my knowledge of all of this is if they're in wetlands, it's really not going to be that much easier to be able to, to build on it. And it there's a lot of wetlands in Lake Purdy's. It doesn't change the zone. Right. So I think it would be beneficial to put together some type of meeting with the neighbors in Lake Purdy's and let people come and ask their questions and be proactive mm -hmm. because. So to your first point about your petitions and getting those signatures, that's, that's great. Um, what we are talking about doing and, and Steve has, uh, we're working on a survey okay. that we want to, you know, there'll be a link on our website. We're, we'll send notices out to Purdy's, Deansbridge, Stonehouse Road, you know, um, Butler Hill and Summit Lake, Annsville uh, neighborhoods. And just asking some simple questions. Are you interested in sewer connection, a water connection? Um, and, you know, uh, maybe we have a couple of questions in there. Um, you know, yes, your taxes will, will go up. Um, you know, it'll be you pay for water, you pay for sep for a sewer connection. Um, but we will get a sense, hopefully, from that by neighborhood. That would be great. You know, we've already basically done a verbal one through the historic district on, on water and just to the property owner. They are interested. Um, and we're going to include the historic district in, in this survey as well. Well, so you I should I, see that. I think, one of, I think one of the biggest concerns for me, not just 
the benefits of having a sewer district in Lake Purdy's. We're going to lose our lake. It's it's coming. Um, and I, I'm trying to impress upon people within the lake community that leaching septics are are here to stay. It's it, it we have a phosphorus problem. That's why we have blue green algae. So I, I'm trying to encourage people to really take a look at that because we don't want to lose our lake. Mm -hmm. We love having it right there. Well, septics were never meant to be a permanent solution. You can pump them out, you can repair them, right? But ultimately, they you're going to have to replace them. And I don't think people realize. I was over in Lewisboro looking at their issue that they're having over there with blue green algae, and there, as far as I understand, the people who live on the water there is that like Truesdale you're talking about. Like Twin Lakes. Oh, over the Twin Lakes? Yeah. Okay. Um, from the way I understood it, they're mandated to pump out their septics. That's a huge expense if you have to get to that point. Yeah, every three years. Yeah, Westchester, every throughout five Westchester. Years. Right, but this is even more, more like when, when Katona. I, I, I want to look into it more because I feel like that we may have to end up doing that at some point to save our lake. I don't know, but well, we should we be looking MS4, at everything. We have an MS4 regulation that we enforce mm -hmm. that you must pump out your septic every five years. Right. So, you know, if, if you haven't picked, pumped out your septic, you know, we check our records with the county, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to come to you and do, you receive a fine or if you don't do it. But look, um, it's great that there's an interest over in parties. And like, you know, I told you before, we, you know, um, have experience now. And unless we get at least 51% of individuals interested, and that's what we're going to hopefully glean from the survey while we go through this process of designing this partnership with North Salem. I mean, if there's a, and that's why I wanted Warren to come in tonight. And that's why I wanted the, the engineers here uh, for any questions we might have. But is this sewer line from Croton Falls to, you know, Heritage Hills um, sewer system beneficial because it's running through our historic district, these neighborhoods I've mentioned, and potentially Lake Purdy's. So should we unleash the grant rider, um, engineers to provide the grant riders with the, uh, the information? And- As I told you, we'd be happy to obviously chip in with grant rider. I, I know it's yours, but- Well, you know- um, Same price, doesn't matter. No, I understand that. Well, we'll take it, whatever money you have, we'll it, put it right here. We'll take it right now. Cash, please. <laughs> you have to pay when you walk out. Going straight to the police department, I might say. So um, is there any additional information either one of the engineers want to partake to the, the town board? Steve, the, just one thing. And I, 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 I assume that they are not connected. The That stormwater plan that went down a couple of years ago that, well never got to fruition to go down it was just withdrawn and this is there any way of combining those because well, i was a i in my opinion that was a good plan to do good things this i think is a good plan to do good things too sewers make sense to me money of course makes sense to me too but is there a way of, of picking back those or they're two separate things so i shouldn't even think about it I believe they're separate, but we'll look into that and confirm. I think some of the restrictions on the funding were stormwater specific, okay. but I'll, I'll confirm that. All right. Thanks. And just two things. I mean, obviously it's going to have a cost. So we're going to create a district that's going to, going to initially cover this line connection. Right. So there's going to be a, there's going to be an operating cost. That's correct. It's going to convey to maybe the business owners here. Any parcels that are within the, the district. district. Yes. And just for parties, I'm, I'm thinking that this is an opportunity for parties at this point. I mean, you know, as we do this, this is not going to affect 
you know, any taxes there until you make a decision there that you want to take advantage of this opportunity. And then we would, you know, expand the study, right? That would be, I think the prudent way to start here would be to look really at that first phase as the supervisor put it in getting the uh, wastewater from Croton Falls all the way down to 02 through the business historic preservation district um, and connecting into the Heritage Hills system as kind of the the backbone transmission infrastructure as right. phase one, and then uh, building out any desire you know, connections that the community desires um, out to Purdy's or other neighborhoods after you have that central infrastructure. But planning that central infrastructure for future capacity, you know, future flow should it be desired. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Excellent. I mean, I just, I, I'm, I'm recording in progress. Finally, they're required. We got to go back to the You're, you're going to want to check with the county way. just to make sure. I have no idea if they're going to let you use the money just to put a main in. Got it. Right? So you, no, you, I, you may know that, but. Right. I would think our historic district would be. Open to it. Open, open to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're, once again, we're going to survey. Uh, so we should have by November 22nd. I mean, we're in the midst of a telecommunication survey right now. Uh, that we're getting a lot of response to, and that's due October 13th. 13th. Right. If we get some type of our survey, which we're, we're close to getting ready, uh, out next week, and we have a two-week, three-week turnaround, you know, we'll have an indication um, by November 22nd when this grant is due. But uh, look, the decision, and the reason why I wanted, you know, Warren and, and the engineers and to come in tonight were to present this, uh, is it mutually beneficial to move ahead um, this project? And it sounds like Steve's gonna come back with something that will be mutually beneficial. We have a good re working relationship with the town of uh, North Salem and their engineer and, and we can put something together. I would think that the one of the key items, um, and I know Roland would be aware of this, but I believe one of the requirements for uh, the grant application would be an IMA between the communities. If we were to pursue uh, the intermunicipal grant uh, component, which does have a higher uh, funding percentage relative to the local match with that program. Um, we'll review that with the town's grant consultant and advise the supervisor and the board. Good. Good. Thanks, Steve. It's a better grant. Yeah, it's a better grant. Yeah, well, you can, we can have that on next week's. Uh, Steve, at what juncture, Steve, at what juncture would we need to have the uh, individual sewer districts formed? Or I should, let me rephrase that. In North Salem, it's a sewer district. In Somers, it would presumably be an extension to the existing district. We'll have to review that in a bit more detail, Warren. My concern is um, the existing Heritage Hills district is privately owned and run. And if we have public money coming in through grants, does the town need to essentially be a, its own district separate from the Heritage Hills. Uh -huh. We can review that detail. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, Steve. So Thanks just to my mind, so North Salem, oh, you want you have some? Mm -hmm. so, so North Salem has a problem, we can help. It would take some capacity from here, but a very little it's, capacity. It's not a, yeah. So exactly. you can go up Butler, which is probably your preference, it's but only, so coming it's only down not, here, helps us and it seems to me for our point of view as i listen to you that is the prudent thing because it's better preparation for the future so that someone was say well 10 years from now or whatever well when they went to a butler why didn't they just come down here it would help everybody so it seems to me it's better preparation for it's the an future. extra mile or so of sewer yeah. line that you don't have to put in yeah so i mean that's what makes sense to me yeah no i appreciate point. it look as i said we've been We've been talking about this on and off for a long time. I think I started talking to Mary Beth about it a while ago. And uh, there were issues with, uh, you know, heritage and the transportation law. And you guys are nice enough to address that so that we could hook in if you agree to it. And, and uh, I'm just thankful that, uh, that you're somewhat optimistic about <laughs> allowing us to hook in. I, I don't have too many options. If there's anything I can do for you, obviously, let me know. Okay. Uh, but uh all right. Well, thanks. So, so what I'll do is, is um, obviously, George and I just kind of nodded back and forth. But uh, if we can work on getting some of that stuff together and getting to the uh, getting to uh, 
the Environmental Facilities Corp. That would be great. I would suggest that we also um, sit down and chat about how we're going to present this to the county. We have another meeting in December for the NWWC, and then there's right. one in February, and you're not going to be there in February. So, uh, um, you know, I think that would be beneficial. I don't want to say I'm further ahead than you, but I, I no, would kind of understand exactly what we're doing. And Right. I think if we... Um, I'm further ahead, except I have no place passed, for it to go, right? That's <laughs> if we get a resolution passed in December um, regarding this project, Know, get support from the Northern Westchester Watershed Committee. I think that's that's one of the things you're going to have to have to do. Right, As I said, there was agreement. I can't remember if it was 2018 or I think it was 2019, and it listed the phase two. And I know uh, Sabrina brought it up. Um, she's planning in uh, Newcastle. Right. She brought it up in the meeting that uh, this wasn't one of the projects. It was Lincoln Dale and. Uh, so yeah. how is that result? She used to work for Somers, you know, way back. She was right. she's very good. She was very good. Yes. And how did that sort of that um, not complaint, but that objection or that concern? How, how did it resolve itself? Uh, it didn't resolve itself. Oh, OK. Yeah. It still well, I think I made a statement like, um, yeah, Somers may have gone down in flames on Lincoln Dale Shenrock, but we're like the Phoenix. We're, we're going to come back. <laughs> with a project and you know warren needs a project he has to, he needs to come to the town of somers so we're gonna put a project together and we'll go back to this committee and try to sell you know this partnership which bails out croton falls it gives <coughs> us future connections and possible phase one connection <coughs> to our historic district properties does that hurdle seem to be large or doable um it, you know you need how many votes on the <coughs> wwc obviously i'm in favor of it so you have two <laughs> out of how many uh, well how many towns 12 i don't really remember all right we'll start lobbying. Ten, eight, so the, nine, so ten, the ten, southern ten. towns gang up on the northern towns there are no right. southern towns it's only the towns no, of north castle newcastle somers of every project and yeah. they'll get it Okay. All right. Got it. I, you know, I, I just wonder. Of course. Of course. Personality. Been, you couldn't but, uh, know, but yes, we'll see. But just give us an idea. <coughs> I hope we will. Uh, well, he's the chairman, so he, he knows what he knows yeah. what he needs to do. Yeah, I know what. Like Nancy Pelosi, know where the votes are. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'll we shut up. Want to thank yeah. you? Uh, <laughs> look, I want to thank you very much uh, for wait, spending the time with me this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Warren. You're welcome, Warren. Thank you for coming. Thanks, everybody else. Okay, so, so I would just uh, say that, uh, Steve, the, um, the sooner we get a hold of uh, Jay O'Connell, the grant folks, just get, get them in the queue so we're not scrambling November 22nd. We have a regular update call with them on Monday, and I'll make sure this is on the agenda. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Take care. Okay, uh, next up on our uh, agenda this evening is um, speed data update from <coughs> Chief uh, Linkletter. Chief, good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Sure. Data for nice. everybody. Pretty cool. Thanks. Eddie, metrics. Uh, good evening. At our last Town meeting, at the last Town Board meeting, you asked me to uh, do a survey of the traffic conditions on uh, Maypac mm -hmm. Avenue with West Terrace. So um, I got to do with the data. Uh, since September 15th till September 29th, we uh, had our speed analyst machine there. <clears throat> and during that time, about 30,000 vehicles passed that location. Found the average speed for the cars going over that location is about 36 miles per hour. Um, there was a, people from the community there, they were stressing that uh, the speeds were much higher, the data doesn't really support uh, the speeds they were talking about. Of course, there's the uh, odds, one or two odd speeds that show the data 
and down and it's very high. We've had, we had people do like 50 or 60, 70 up there, but it's only one or two cars. Well, when you say average, is that the median or the mean you're talking about? That's the average speed we're getting. Well, the median. The, the median is half or above, half below. Meaning is just all the speeds average together divided well, the by the median speed. Cars. I believe was forty one is what they what they uh, they came up with. Okay, but but we'll find in okay. most of the cars the average would be thirty six. Arithmetic mean teacher. Right. During that time, uh, we we uh, enhanced the enforcement over there. Uh, we issued uh, eighteen speeding summonses in the vicinity of. Uh, Lakeview Drive and Woodcrest Terrace. The speeds that we issued the summons from range from 42 to 53 miles an hour. So, uh, I mean, there's one thing, you can also think about it that uh, the device sort of works, it slows people down. You don't know that, but well, it may. When the, the person that was here was complaining about the speed coming yeah. up the hill. And at yeah. that time we actually had the speed machine going down the hill. Okay. So then we moved the speed machine over to, to get the northbound traffic, but we also put the data machine out there, and that's what really gives you the, the, the true uh, the true reading. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, for the first for the first five days, we didn't have the uh, the data machine out there. I just had the speed machine, so that that would that would automatically slow people down. So speeds. So to refresh our memory, this is this is that corner that they come out and they can't see when they want to make Correct. a left, they can't yes. see that. Yes. But yes. coming up that on an average speed of maybe 35, 36 miles yes, an hour. That's that what we're getting. But that could still be dangerous, right? For that uh, well, any, you know, it's just it's dangerous because they don't have a, a sight view. They have a sight view. Yeah. You know, if you, I mean, if you can see the car coming all the way down the road, it wouldn't really matter. But the fact is that there's such a yeah. uh, the turn there is, is a little difficult. All right. Well. Yeah. So as a result of this, what what conclusion do you come to that people? It's not as bad as we thought. Well, I'm sure if you live there and you're trying to get out of that 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 those roadways, Lakeview. Yeah. 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 Would crest, it, it's bad, right? But the speeds aren't 60, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. You get the odd one going through, right? Over the three different right. days, the three different uh tra charts that we did, which is amazing to me, is that it's 10, it seems like this it's almost the exact same amount of cars over a five day period, a five day period, a six day period. And during those times, we get like it's almost like the same guy is doing the 70 miles an hour. Well, that, that, that's what I was going to ask, Brian. Is it did we have it by time? So, did we can we determine if it was like when BOCES ended the school day? Of course, the higher speeds are, are when BOCES gets out okay. and when the high to you know, the morning commute, the afternoon commute, and BOCES gets out. And how many days was this? This was uh, I believe 16 days from the 14th. 16 days. So, right. so we broke it down to three different charts, mm. but you, it's just amazing how close the data is on all the charts, yeah. And was the BOCE speed basically the same as the uh, I, I, I have to look a little the rush hour speed? It's, yeah, yeah sure. it is. You know, just, it's that short period of time around 12, between 12 and 2. You know, yeah. between, seven, between 7 and 9, we have the issues. And so 12 and 2, we, that would probably be the students because yeah. the faculty would still right. be there. Right. So those are younger drivers. Yes. Mm -hmm. But going about the same speed as the rush hour, but they're probably not as good drivers. Right. All right. All right. Interesting. All right. Well, the um, <clears throat> 18 tickets, is that, an, is that a high number, low 12, number, an average yeah, number? From January through uh, September, uh, September 1st, we only had issued 17 tickets over there for speeding in that area on Mayapack Avenue. So since we enhanced the enforcement over there, we, we got 18 in the, in the three, within, in the three a, three, within a two, two and a half week period. Okay. Yes. So the message is out. I mean, I, I see people traveling a little slower over there. I see, you know, I see them coming up the hill. They're going a little slower, but you know, can you, we'll can... have to move that that machine onto other roads. So, mm -hmm. but I'll put it in. Well, we have plenty of choices. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, Warren, Lovell, uh, one eighteen. Oh, right, and I'm also back to having uh, three speed three speed machines. For a while, we were down to one. Two had broken. One I got was able to get refurbished. One I had to replace. So okay. it would be next week. I'll have. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting Budget to see the study when you, when you pick another location, maybe up Mayapack Avenue where Stonewall is, or just to see. Well, I, I mean, what I'm going to do next time is before I put the speed sign out there, we're going to put the data analysis out there. Because okay. then I'll see the true speed and we'll throw the speed sign up. Yes. And then we'll see the data and see if that brought it down. Yeah, right. Right. And after that, we're going to start trying to do an education, uh, you know, educate the motorists. You know, we don't want to have to. I don't want to be giving people some of this all the time. We so, want to educate them. To of course, them down. of course. And years ago, we, we were we had these uh, pamphlets we used to give out. 
during uh, when we stopped the car. Uh, we're working on making it a little bit more informative. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe instead of summons in all the time, we'll set up like a, a safety uh, checkpoint. Mm -hmm. Just tell people, you know, we're concentrating on this area. We want to slow, slow everybody Thank down. You. We don't want to have to summons everybody. Of course. You know? I think people would appreciate that, everybody. I think. Kind of give them a warning, and then the next time if they get caught there. Yeah, I, I think that would be appreciated. Obviously, the ultimate goal here is to keep our roads safe. Yes. So, um, all right, great. Um, so we'll, we'll look forward to another update, maybe another uh, another month or so, okay. when you have your uh, your data, speed data set up, and then you put the speed sign out. We'll get a nice... No comparison there. When you issued these new tickets, you had to uh, use officers more present than in the past. Uh, well, I, I stationed them. Yeah, right. I Would directed you... them to stay over there a little more. Normally, we're, we're roaming over. Yeah. Over Will you continue to do that? Yes. Yes. Okay. They'll, they'll, we'll stay in that area. And we like to move around. Like I said last time, once we sit in a location for a, a while, it's on. It's, yeah, out. it's out. It's out. Right. Okay. It's always. Yeah, so you know, most of my guys put it on themselves, so they know when they're being, they know that's out. And then it's pointless sitting there. You know? Yeah, everybody goes slow by, and then I just take off. Right. Just as a sidebar question on that, you know, that turn and then coming out there, is there a mirror up there in some, or can there be one? I, I, you I wouldn't. Know. That wouldn't be you, but that, that would. That would be we, the we resident did, would put it up. We did that. Dead one by Warren, Warren, we, we, we did that on Warren Street, and it was, and it was helpful. I, it's probably, it's probably but it's, 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 it's helpful for the yeah. one yeah. resident. Yeah, well, that doesn't have that really anything to do with speed control. Did you happen to catch the guy who was doing seventy? No, no. <laughs> There's somebody out there. <laughs> probably like I said, same individual. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Sergeant. Thank you. So, um, well, I I'll... think it should be noted. I'm sorry we, that 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 we talked about cameras, and you did some research on that, or Roland did. Okay. And that we are not permitted under state law to use cameras. Only two localities are, so towns are not. So, if anyone was thinking of that, yeah, it's a good tool, but not yeah. available to us. Yeah. Right. So, Roland, you get, you got to work on that. Roland. <laughs> Get us, get us permission to do that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Chief, thanks for the, uh, the update on the uh, speed data. Uh, also, um, we have uh, Lieutenant Fulton with us. Sergeant. Uh, Sergeant. Oh, Sergeant. Yeah. You're promoted. Yes, See sir. See that? Thank you for the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> That's why right, so, we called you here. So Sergeant Fulton <laughs> uh, wanted to address the board. Um, Regarding um, some IT up upgrades, oh great for, for the police department. He's the man. Right, so man. he's he's been working with um, you know Tammy and uh, and Ray. The uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so what you see in front of you is the proposal from law enforcement software services. This is the same software that's being used currently in Pound Ridge, uh, Lewisboro and North Salem. So the reason why, for, first of all, it's pretty much two questions. One, do we need software? And if so, which one? So the answer to the first question is absolutely, because it's been, I guess our entire existence that we've had no software and it is, pretty insane to think that where we've gone this far without it. So even when you just had to you know, get those numbers for like, you know, what tickets we've written in a certain location over a period of time, that's all done by hand. Every single thing we do is done by hand. So the idea of, you know, in this modern time in 2021, that we still have to literally take out handwritten reports and leaf through each one to come up with some sort of data set for whatever you guys desire for, you know, for a, a, a complaint from the public. It all has to be done by hand and it takes hours and hours. So Tom, let me ask you, the, we do have laptops in a number of the cruisers. Right. So is that to, col to collect information basically? Right now, the laptops that are in the cars are only set up to work with the state 
so what happens is the state will uh, call us for a, a job and then they send, we call it a screen, but it's like it, it's, it, the job comes to the officer in the car. Now, this is very great to have because what happens numerous times, the chief will tell you, uh, the dispatcher will say, yeah, go to this call for uh, harassment. And then you're like, okay, so you start heading over there, the screen pops up and it says, you know, person, uh, you know, armed with a knife comes over to, you know, it's like this whole description that was not in a dispatch at all. So all that information shows up on the screen. You're like, oh, this is a completely different call than what was dispatched. And that happens a lot. And that's a state a that's, state system. That's the state. Yeah. So that they get that information. And plus, they use the computers to run license plates, driver's licenses, and that sort of yeah, thing. Is that the tracks system? We don't have tracks right now, but we're set up for tracks. We okay. can just so, you know, transition to that, that. That system pretty much covers every, let's say, dispatched call out of the system down in correct so so essentially what you're saying is you're on this system it's a state system mm -hmm. but it it county state local everybody gets to see this added information right because also now if i get a call at you know one two three main street i could just look at it and then hit the history and find out oh this is the third time there's been a domestic okay. here so you know there's a really big problem at this house before you even get there so what does this do? So what that is nice to have, and it's and it's an essential tool, but that doesn't help us with the report writing and the management of all those reports. Because as you can imagine, every call you go on, we get more and more you know, pieces of paper and they're all handwritten. And now, you know, one of the citizens from the town comes in, they say they want to copy that report, and they're getting a handwritten report, which does not look professional. Let's be honest. And if that person comes in a year later, it's you have to go in by hand and try to search this thing. Whereas if you had a computerized system, like I think every other department at this point in Westchester, you just put in whatever information query and you get what you want. So that state system is a dispatch system. It doesn't have yeah, these types of reports right. linked it's to it. Correct. So, yeah. That's so correct. for 10 grand, you get the software you need to get the reports that you need. And then more importantly, we, we call up Brian and say, we need X, Y, Z. You can go into this system and pull it up much easier. Correct. And the nice part about it is that this person already, the, the, this company already deals with Pound Ridge, North Salem, and these other jurisdictions. And he knows how to tie this into the state. So when we eventually do go to tracks, it's an easy transition. We're not worried about, you know, how, how are we going to make this work? And, you know, cause we went to other companies. This is not the first company we went to. What does the County do? Uh, I'm, I believe the system that they're using, it, it costs like hundreds of thousands of dollars because it's, wow. uh, you know, much more, ex, you know, uh, expansive, much more than what we need. But what is the state doing? The state software, I, I'm not familiar with what well, they use. Isn't um, that the tracks system? Because no, tracks is just for accidents and traffic tickets. So everything else is is separate. But the um, there were two other things that we did try. One was a, a company in the Midwest, and that price came in almost the same, a little higher than this one. But the problem is they're not familiar with any of our software and I'm sorry, our forms and stuff like that. So to try to make it mesh with what we have here. It was confusing. And Tom, hold on one second. Hmm? But Roland, this is over 10 grand. So we're going to have to do an RFP or something to that effect. Uh, unless it's deemed a professional service, but I think if you're just buying the software and not buying an IT professional, I think, yes, you're right, Tom, you probably have to put it out. Well, right. so there's, well, I'm going to, Play the devil's advocate a little bit here support, because um, not one, right? one conversation. Sorry. Okay. So, you know, Tom has been working with Tammy and Ray Maggi, who's our IT guy. Mm -hmm. And I understand this is a server based system. Correct. Okay. So you need to have, have a server. Um, and we have been making a concerted effort in town to move our files into the cloud for cybersecurity reasons. And so we came to a little bit of a um, concern here that this is um, a program 
that is a server based and is not cloud compatible. Um, the, the other issue that I had, um, the, the author of this software, uh, we worked, let's say maybe three or four years ago, uh, Pound Ridge was very, they promoted this, this gentleman, but when, when questioned, he's basically a one man operation. Um, he may have a partner in California, as I recall, but you know, he's, he's one guy company, um, which is a little troublesome. Um, so the fact, I, I think what we can do here is, and the fact that we have to go out, I was going to ask you, Tom, if you had other bids you know, on, on, on the system and do any of those other bids or people, excuse me. Is there, is there server capacity in this cost as well? I'm sorry. Is there server capacity in this course? That is does not. That's just software. It's not hardware. So the, the make there may be a hardware associated. There's going to be hardware associated with it. Yes. So it's it's yes. probably even more costly. You know, the, the, the in my view, I mean, the whole idea of having a report writer and being everything hands do it. down, we got to do. It. Yeah, without a question. The question is, is how do you do it in right. a way that's sustainable and scalable and makes sense? I mean, the first thing I usually go to is. You know what are the major agencies are using? What are they, what are they doing? If we get access to it, the problem with going by what the major agencies are using is those systems are very involved with things that we don't need, uh, evidence tracking stuff like that, things that we're not doing, and you wind up paying for that. And the the prices, like I had this guy, it's another company uh, from Central Square. It's one of the major companies that sell to law enforcement. And he came down and he showed us the whole system, which was glitching the entire time he was showing it to us, by the way. And the price on this one uh, came out to $20,045 just for the software. And the whole time I'm like, yeah, half the stuff we're never going to use. And that's, that's the problem with getting these softwares that other big departments use is it's it's a waste of money because we're not going to use right. it. So, so we have a one man operation and a, and a, yeah. Big well, box store right. solution. The, the only well, other thing with the one man operation, I do understand your concern is like, it's if he like were to die tomorrow, his software doesn't die too. Like it would still work. It's just that it wouldn't be there to do supported, any kind of maintenance right. on it. So I wouldn't be like, like I wouldn't want to waste that resolution on him. But, <laughs> no. no, but then uh, you run into conversion issues and, and you know servers that are going to basically be obsolete at some point. There is the hardware issue. I, I was telling Tammy, I'm a cloud-based guy myself. All my personal stuff is cloud-based in my other job. But with this, I'm really concerned about going cloud-based because if we have a situation where we have a, a data interruption, like a storm or something like that, that's when we're going to need this the most. Uh, when we're out there, we're writing reports. And the idea of going out and then like doing everything on paper and then having to transcribe it back into computer format when everything comes back up is just daunting so, but, 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 okay but you have two internet sources right yeah currently we only have the one i thought you have optimum and, and you have files we or want verizon. we wanted to do a verizon backup but we never did it okay. and then there's cellular data that you can connect to right the cellular is to well, get to the i'm just saying to get yeah. to the cloud if you had a cloud-based system Right, but the, the cellular one is what um, we're using in the cars. The right. Optimum is what we're using in in house. Okay. Uh, right. The only issue is the last big storm we had, we lost both, so we didn't have Verizon either. So from a workflow point of view, you go on a call and you have to write something up. You go back to the to the uh, office to do that. Right now, that or with this. Car? Right now or with this? The before, right now. Right now, right now, yeah, right now we'll, we'll just we'll take out a piece. Car. Yeah, take out a piece of paper and write it out. And what you would do with this is do it in the car. Right, we do it right in the car and then transmit it. But it's not even so much. They do it in the car now, mm -hmm. but what they're saying is that down the road, right. it's much easier to access. Yeah, it's this what's in right? It's in a system. Right. I mean, they still they yeah. still punch it in, in the car. And even yeah, though we're transmitting it from inside the car, should the internet go down, then yeah, you can go back to headquarters and do the report and it would just get stored mm -hmm. locally. So currently when 
So like there was something in front of my house and one of the officers came, he was mm-hmm. wonderful, um, Officer McGuire, and, and uh, wrote it up right there. All right, and he gave me a piece of paper. And um, then he went back to the department and w- what happens then? Does someone else have to transcribe that into your, in now, not after yeah, this? No, not, just it, goes it, they put it into it a into file, a folder, yes. literally a file. <laughs> Yes. So that's what I'm saying. Like if you like five years from now said, oh, I did that report about the tree that fell on my house. Can I get a copy of that? Yeah, we'll find it. We'll get back to you. <laughs> Do we have to go through it by hand? No. I, <laughs> uh, there's no question. We need to. We, we want to upgrade. No sure, sure, sure. question about it. Um, this has been a long process. Yeah. Uh, getting those laptops and the cruisers, you know. Was that was a big help. For is, sure. Is a big thing. So it's, I don't think you, you hear, there's no resistance um, no. regarding getting a program. It's just, if we're going to add a new program, um, at least from our art, IT perspective, mm-hmm. you know, it's cloud-based, cloud-based, get in the cloud, um, cybersecurity, ransomware, you know, even mm-hmm. small municipalities, there's one down south that had to pay something like $600,000 to get their tax things and everything else um, <clears throat> ransomed. What does so, it, yeah, yeah. So that's that's the concern that was brought to my attention that I wanted you know the board to hear about. So, if, but well, is there a cloud based? Is just, there? A cloud, well, is there? I see what you're out. saying. If he goes yeah. out and gets put some more quotes, oh, maybe are there others? Well, I was going to say these other two companies. I did ask about cloud based, and they said they're not offering that right now. Um, they hope to in the future one day, but. Right now, but Sergeant, when you do the analysis, also it's ten thousand for the software. But if I, if I'm going to have to spend a whole bunch on hardware, mm-hmm. should have that cost here, and then you might find a solution that may have both. So you would be comparing it apples and apples, right? So here you're right. showing me the software. If I have to do ten thousand dollars in hardware, real- yeah, these other quotes are all software. That's why right. I was trying well, to. Well, but it my that point way. is, is that you might go to, let's say, a second solution, you may get one that handles the software and the hardware in that one price because it's cloud-based. And Right. It's been so difficult. It would be unfair to say you're going to get this for 10000 No, no. This is, yeah. No, we're not, we're not saying that this is the total cost. This is just right. for the software. But um, the problem, too, is this is such a, um, you know, it's not like a Microsoft Word. You know, it's, it's very specific. And so there's not that many companies that make it. And there's the central square I know is like the sixth iteration of uh, a company that we used back in my old job in Greenberg. So it's like, they're buying each other out and the amount of these companies is getting smaller and smaller. And it's just, it's, it's hard to find, you know, a a solution because there's not that many of them. And you haven't found any cloud base. So, so far, no cloud base now. You know, Tom, it may not be over 10,000, though. Uh, not that it's a, it's a big deal. I didn't hear that. Um, does, do we have to do an official RFP if the cost is 5530? No. Why would or you? can we take the three quotes? If it... Uh, I'm not familiar with your RFP guidelines and state controller gives you those when you need one quote, three quotes. I don't know what those limits are, but if it's over 10,000, then you do need to go to a bid unless you're buying it through your IT professional and he's installing it. Yeah, I don't think it's over 10,000 because the annual support for three of them is 3,300. And then you need the other one for the tracks interface at 1400. So that's sort of a subs- subscription yeah, but the, thing. But, so but that would project, not, that's a yearly cost. I don't know if that would part of the 10,000. You have to look at, you have to look at the total cost of the project. It's not just software. You also yeah, have that's to buy hardware. Hardware. That's what I was going to ask that mm. maybe we can get, you know, the package. Okay, yes. So we could have software. Well, it would be over 10,000. If you don't have a server or, Right. Yeah. The issue was with the, I know the town gets a, a, some sort of a business discount from Dell or whoever. Uh, so I didn't, I, I can't avail myself to that. So I don't know how to find out that price. Cause I, okay. I didn't want to so, just go online you know what? and get, I'm going to suggest you know, um, maybe tomorrow you circle back with, uh, with Tammy. Uh, okay. She can talk to Ray um, and we can get a price for a server 
um, and, and the software. If you could get those other quotes, sure. so we could take a look at those. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I'll let, uh, we could ask Tammy and Ray, to, are, are there any uh, cloud-based programs that do this? Okay, I mean, uh, that we could take a look at. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I can send over everything to tomorrow. They'll probably ask you. Good. I had a so question about you. the data you? capture that you mentioned. You I'm were sorry, saying really? that it would keep the history, and that's great because if you wanted to do research, that's great. And I remember just from my corporate experience, you know, uh, software companies would come in and I would have to ask this question a lot of software can do a lot of things with a lot of data. But what are you going to do to help me capture? my data. So in other words, if this was to go through, mm. how are we going to pull all of that history that's valuable into this system? Or is it a stake in the ground going forward? Yeah, it's actually yeah, very intricate and, and, and nice in the fact that it you have to, well, the, the guy would do it, uh, put in all of our streets. So this is, it sounds silly, but it's a huge problem. Like if you just, like for instance, Crystal Drive, if you put it in with a C, ry and that's how it's going to go in the system you try to search it with the k you're not going to find it yeah. so this system would you put in crystal with a c will reject it and tell you to like pick the right name so now you have you know that day so that but that has to be all loaded in right right he would do that he puts all our streets in so now that data is in there you know the streets are going to be correct now when you go to search it well it doesn't matter what you're searching for you could put like you know a Honda, and then it's going to throw you back every incident that had a Honda. Now you want to like say, oh, something happened with a red Honda. You put it in red, and now it's even more, right. like less and less reports. Mm -hmm. so, and you can, but, like, but again, does it capture asking. the history? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So let's say implementation was January 1st of 2022. Yeah, it's going back. Is this far. system going to be able to do that research on things that happened anything Only prior to January? Sorry, I misunderstood your question. No, it wouldn't go back in time. No, we'd still have the paper reports <laughs> until we um so you know, they got too old right i mean theoretically you could enter it all by hand but you that would be could. a big thing it and then how far yeah. back it's do you go in the ground so, and then moving you know forward. Yeah, it would yeah. seem yeah. like if you have a system you could sort of use just go forward with the new system. yeah i mean that would be a lot of work that'd be a lot of work. Work. five yeah. years down the road like me playing out my garage says, can i get something from right yeah. december 2021 you'd have it you could have it okay so i i think we you have agreement yeah you need a you need a program. You just want to be comfortable with the, you know, the program and what the total cost would be with a server. Sure. All right. Cool. All right we'll go Thank, Thank you, Lieutenant. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Sergeant. Sergeant. <laughs> Sergeant. Sergeant. Oh, wait. I'm promoting. <laughs> that, that's Chief yeah, Fulton. Yeah. Yes. Chief Thanks, Fulton. guys. Thank Chief you Fulton. Thank you. And Thank Sergeant you. Lee Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> Young Mr. Bill. Okay, so um Little did uh, Eagle Scout candidate Simon Daly know oh, he was going to get a civil uh, service <laughs> government lesson this evening. <laughs> Most but, likely one that he did not want. No. <laughs> we should give you an Eagle Scout. <laughs> for just sticking just this out. You get the endurance award just for making it through the meeting. Right. So, uh, yeah, just that. If you're comfortable, you can remove your man. Well, you're not vaccinated, but. He might be. You okay. might be. You don't know. I don't know. Well, you don't have to tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> but we want to be able to hear you. So, so just introduce I'm, yourself. Let us. Um, I'm Simon Daly. I'm in. I'm a life scout for Summer Street 28. I've been through the entire summer school, summer central school district uh, schools, and I have. I've been in summer my pretty much my whole life. So I am now going for the rank of Eagle Scout, and okay. I'm here to present to you today what my Eagle Scout project will be. And it is displaying military tribute banners for the veterans on in, in downtown Summers. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So just my proposal is... is oh, it's behind us. Right it, there. It is. Right there. It is. Um, oh, and, yeah. That's not the current one. Um, but what my proposal is, is no, a, couple, uh, a couple more, one more, yeah, uh, one more actually. That's idea. What my proposal is, is that it is to take the 
Um, American flags, there are currently about 41 American flags on both sides of the street in downtown Summers, right over there. And I'm going to um, install about 20 of these flags, these tribute flags, where the American flags are currently. So just taking a couple of them down and putting the um, tribute banners up in their place. And some... And you have, a, you have some equipment and mm -hmm. tools to do. What I'm thinking right now is that we're going to get some something um, kind of like the highway department to do it for okay. us so that we don't have to you know, go up, but we're going to get it. We're going to try and find people to manufacture all of the of the banners and then get something, someone like the highway department to put it up for us. Okay. But the flags itself, they are going to be 24 by 48 inches and they're made out of uh, Tyvek vinyl. Uh, there are four additional sizes if that is not the, the size that we do want. But uh, we have ordered a sample. So if I do, if I am required to come back, we can show you what the sample banner is. Um, they should be displayed around the time of Memorial Day, all the way to Veterans Day, because that time between uh, that time, which is winter, um, the snow and the weather conditions could potentially damage the banners. And we want to try to keep the banners, um, the banners Preserve. Healthy, healthy for healthy. as long as possible. <laughs> Um, and all retired banners will go to the family um, of that veteran. So, and if they don't, if they don't necessarily have space for it, it will go for it will go to a sponsor of the banners, which is a way that I'm planning to have the banners funded. So, so Simon, real quick, mm -hmm. and maybe you're going to answer this question. So, you you put twenty of them up, and then when they um, when they get retired. Do you replace them with somebody else or how does that work? Um, we can get that same person up again oh, okay. or we can get another banner. So there'll be something in place to replace yeah, them Yeah, it's the not road. like that's just gone forever. Okay. It's gonna, still going to be there. So it's you're going to rotate be... these or replace these. We're going to... Seasonally, sort of dividing the year in half, so to yeah. speak. So I, my, I got relatives up in uh, Fishkill, mm -hmm. Stormville, and they keep theirs up. All, all the time oh, really? and throughout the whole but i tend to agree with you because i see them i see them fading and i think so i think your idea is good because also people it's just kind of part of the scenery yeah. you know and you don't notice but when it goes up and then down i think you gain more attention so mm -hmm. i like your idea yeah it's also um it's also as you said to keep them um, more yeah. prevalent and I more think they're more likely to notice them if they yeah. go up periodically. Mm -hmm. And so I know a big important part of it is the cost of of the flags. And for um one 24 by 48 inch banner, it is about 150 US dollars. So um that is excluding labor and and anything like installation and taking them back down during the winter time. That is excluding all of that, just the flat cost of the banner itself. And my goal is to personally raise money through um, local sponsorships and other types of fundraising. Okay. And so this replaces the flags, right? Yeah, this replaces the American flags that are currently on there, but it's not all of them. It's only about half of them. Okay. Could it be done every other? That, that also could happen, yeah. Yeah. So, but what, you, what you're looking at is your fundraising other. for... Mm -hmm. Sorry, Bill. I didn't know if you were done. I'm done. Okay. Uh, you're looking, you're fundraising to buy the actual flags and then the town would play a part in that you would probably need their help to mm -hmm. put them up and take them down. Yeah, that's what I'm fundraising for. I don't think you'd have any trouble raising that money. I think most people yeah. just ask and they'll say 150 to honor a veteran. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, I have a few questions. So how do you, how are you going to solicit and obtain pictures? We're right. going to go to... Um, what I'm thinking is to go to um, veteran societies, if that's what you would call it, and ask them for veterans who are currently, maybe maybe not currently alive, but just veterans as a whole, and we can display the the the, uh, the stations they were in, and display, of course, their picture and their name, uh, years of service, and if they are still alive to this day. And we're going to go to different societies, and even maybe some families who wanted to. Um, want the guarantee for their family member to have a banner right um 
once again, I know that recently our, our Veterans of Foreign War organization has been retired mm -hmm. in our town. Um, We're probably going to go to the Historical Society for that then. Yeah. So I would just maybe you kind of get commitments on mm -hmm. pictures before you make your, your big investment. Yeah. We're going to go see who wants one and how right. many you can obtain. So before another question is uh, about kind of talked about a little bit, but duration that, that these banners would be up. So they'd be up around Memorial Day mm -hmm. and to Veterans Day. OK, so that's good for this year. So you're you're a freshman. I'm a freshman. Yes. You're going to be doing this <laughs> when, when you're a sophomore. I'm going a junior, to a senior. try to finish it up by the end of freshman year, but um, it will probably end up leading into the, no, but, that summer. Just, but I think what the supervisor yeah. is asking is, are you going to be there to monitor putting them up? Yes. Down, correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like what are you saying? And is eventually it, you're going to five years, go to college or will something. It be, will it be sort of a troop? Um, we're going to try and find someone to maintain it while I am not here because um, as uh, some one of you mentioned, I'm going to probably go off to college, so I will not be here to maintain them. So that's why we're going to try and find someone that will help maintain them. And Would your troop yeah. formally well, adopt it then as a troop project that is ongoing, that you is passed on um, I'm from not scout sure. to scout? I can ask them about that, but. I would think that that would be some sort of service project. Yeah, that, that would definitely do, be like a couple hours. Service hours, hours yeah. at all, I would think so. Because yeah, sometimes these projects are great, mm -hmm. but then, you know, the scout grows up, the scout goes yeah. someplace and sort of left, mm -hmm. you know. Right, and and just as far as putting them up and down, um, to depend on our highway department to do that mm -hmm. may, may be a, a stretch. We now currently have volunteers that come and put up the flags that is you know, also a possibility and and they do take them down during the winter um so we could put you in touch mm -hmm. with those people that um, much appreciated is that, there any, they uh, work with you in this on electric poles they're on the poles it's right utility it, poles. Uh, utility poles are there any rights of way or stuff that yeah, that's it. a good question. Most of these that Most I've seen plants, in yeah. Fishkill and Carmel, um, they're on wooden telephone poles, mm -hmm. but could they also be on an aluminum lighting pole? I'm not quite sure. I can speak for you, but um, we're, we're at no shortage of wooden poles, but just to know yeah, what the options are. I don't see a reason why they couldn't, but yeah. I'm still not quite sure. Okay. So, I mean, contact me after the meeting regarding the pole issue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so if you know, for repair, it has to climb the pole, and this thing's an evasive mm -hmm. part of what the structure is, I and mean, I just need to coordinate it. So you said you you counted the uh, the number of uh, flags that are out there. Yeah, it's about forty one. Okay, because another issue I'm thinking is the historic district and the historical society. Of the American flag is one thing, you know, a uh, picture display of a veteran. While honorable, you know, may not be applicable for the historic district, but if there are, you know, around along 202, if there mm -hmm. were 20, you know, poles that you could use to do that, mm -hmm. that would be just another, I'm trying to <laughs> think ahead here. Yeah. So, you know, that might be, you know, included in your proposal. I think it's a nice idea, though, because yeah. you have all these people who have served and we everybody knows somebody but nobody knows them all and i'm sure there's more than 20 and if it was on a rotating basis uh coupled That's with flags yeah and i mean it is also, very patriotic and i'm sure this i would think the historical side would say hey wait a second we could provide you with pictures of guys who served in the civil war that maybe that's the that. a whole other thing now you know yeah and we can also expand it to not just downtown but we can expand it farther um, along the street. It doesn't just have to be where the current American flags are. They can be further along as well. Yep. If we want to include them along. You just want to keep them all in one area. Yeah, we don't so want to... You don't want them scattered. We don't want to expand them towards... No, like in Maypac, when you go down Route 6 near the firehouse there, you go by the whole stretch and they're they're all together on every pole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, we don't want to scatter And Yorktown too. Right. Um, I'm just thinking... I'm sure there's to do I'm them sure. in the, if, if you stay out of the historic district, that'd be one thing that you're not going to get a review by them. 
Uh, is this something the Architectural Review Board should right, sure. comment on? Does it affect architecture? I, mean, I don't think so. I, I just, just throw it I, out. I, I just think, you know, because they're going up lateness. all over the place. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, I guess, suppose. I mean, I'd like more comments, like maybe somebody's got some really good ideas. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. And we're, might end up I mean, with more people helping. Yeah, yeah, we're co we're coming up with some, right. you know. Right. But what I'd like to see, too, is when you say when you get the sample, mm -hmm. that's going to be a big thing, too, regarding the size. I mean, we hear yeah. two foot by four foot. It sounds big, but on a telephone pole, it might not look that big. Yeah, of course. So we there are to, also know. four other sizes. Are those, is that the size of the ones that are in Mayapak and... Do you know? Yorktown. I'm not quite sure. No, but yeah, I, those look. Those I are pretty know. big. Yeah, those are pretty big. But we can, we can, of course, the expand size the size if necessary. Okay. Six, eight, no, so your your project sounds uh, very interesting and laudable. Um, once again, my my concern would be um, how long they would be displayed, and then if you're making this investment, you know, when you're going to have a life after being uh, a scout. You know what happens after that? What's yeah? What's the I will contact my my current uh, scoutmaster, which I'm going to see him. Right. I'm going to see him soon, but I can contact him and ask him if even um, scoutmasters are going to be after him if they could potentially uh, do adopt it. Yeah, adopt it into yeah. either yearly program. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so once again, we can put you in touch with the current volunteers. Yeah, that are doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I would appreciate it. What's going to keep it going in perpetuity? Yeah, I'm going to... Yeah, you don't want the thing to end. To die. Yeah. I'm going to try and find some someone to and help maintain the Good. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Simon. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, next item on our agenda is uh, to award the bid um, and authorize supervisor to execute the contract for the removal and replacement of a generator at Heritage Hills Activity Center in the amount of $115,000 uh, with Kenlar Electric, Electric um, per memo dated September 13th, 2021 from Thomas Tuma. I would like to move that. So that's in form of a motion. You know, I have a question. Just last sure. night, I was told Discussion. that I think literally yesterday, the day before, they found out they needed not two propane tanks, but four, but it wouldn't change the foot pad of it. But I don't know if it changes the price. Well, that would be, that where did change. you hear that? From a member of the committee up there at Heritage Hills. He said, literally, we were just told that. By who? Yeah, by whom? Oh, Is, we didn't add reject the bids for the excavating and the storage tank. So maybe you want to add that as well. For we're not bidding, we're rejecting the bids for the storage tanks and the excavating. Okay. So we'll add to this resolution excavation and to reject the excavation and storage tank. Okay. So we're rejecting bids. excavation, which I think the town is going to do. You're, yes, they did say that, right? And the bid for the um, propane tanks. Jack Maddox told me that this. That's right. Okay. Well, two to four. Yeah. Well, we're, just, we're getting close to excavating, and it's if it doesn't change the footprint. He, he said it, it. It didn't. That was the thing. He said, but they need to get go to the zoning board to go from two to four now. So I'm just saying, it yeah. just happens. But it it it'll, it'll all go. It'll all work. Yeah, well, I mean, frankly, this has been a pro problem with this project since March. Scope we go out to bid. And then change it. And then, then yeah. and we put the specs together, then it changes. Yeah, I remember that. Right. Um, we were going to go out to bid for two different kinds of generators. Uh, and we decided on, on the upgraded one. Right. So, um, so are they changing this now? or I don't 
he, he just said they can't, it needs four propane tanks. For what reason? What, what, what I, gallon? I, not, like I, I do not know. Okay. Not well, know. This was scoped going out already. The, so we're going to the zoning board. It's hard but, to believe that it's not going to no, fit. No. After I don't know if Tommy told effort. him that or the company told well, him I think, that. Yeah, I think we need to know whether Tom told him that. Because they went through the same exercise. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay, I know, so I right know. right now? Put it, back, put it next week. No, no, no. We can, we can award the bid. Because I want to get this generator ordered. Okay. So this issue yeah. doesn't revolve. It take a, doesn't right. revolve around the generator. So It'll take months to get the it. motion is to award the bid for 115000 for the generator right. and reject the excavation and propane purchase um, of the um, we'll put that in the resolution. And we'll and we'll deal with that next week. And we then we'll it. deal with Whatever. you know excavation. Like I said, I think the town is going to pick that up and we can deal with the propane tax purchase of those i'm more interested in what is it two more <laughs> thousand gallon tanks yeah. you know or, know or is it a, or you can't fit two one thousand gallon tank yeah so, so you, you need good to get question. smaller yeah. tanks good so question. it's four right good question i, just I want a business case to yesterday said, oh, by the way you said on your agenda tomorrow all of a sudden so. <laughs> okay so the motion is to um purchase the award the bid to uh ken lar and reject the excavation bid we got and the propane tank proposal we got. All right. Second. Oops, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Aye. moved. Okay, thank and I'm you. Still, I'm still trying to get money from the county, from the county representatives, because that makes perfect sense to me and right. I think us. And I've had that It's a county thing. Think, you think, should pay think, for part of it. Duh. They contribute to the last one. When Mary yeah. Beth did the last one, or was it 25 years ago? Well, who did it the last <laughs> year? 20 years ago? Like 10. 10. Yeah, it was 10 years so ago. So it died in 10 years. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, so, but the, the county did participate in that last one. So that I don't know. our Kitley sure. Koval think... is, is still trying to work. She's working on that for yeah. us. <clears throat> okay. It doesn't uh, seem like it should be that hard to get an answer, you know? I'm just no. saying. Okay. <laughs> Will you or won't you help us? Okay, the uh, next item on our agenda is authorize um, a waiver for the environmental determination fee in the amount of $50 in conjunction with Make a Wish Foundation um, request per memo, excuse me, uh, memo dated October 1 from Steve Wolfel Engineering Department. Uh, we can move that to consensus. Uh, item 11, uh, 7 amend August 5th resolution with regards to the electric vehicle charging stations to reflect location change from the Somers Police Station to Reese Park. And that I would like to move. So- Did they say where they were gonna put it in Reese? Um, where they wanna do it? Yeah, I think S Steve has it over by the tennis courts, I think. Um, so I need a, I made the motion. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So moved. Um, I'd like to make this a motion as well. Uh, make a motion to propose to adjust the hourly rate of seventeen fifty for the following employees per memo dated September 29th from my office. Uh, the, these are senior nutrition department staff whose hourly rates are below seventeen fifty, and the assistant assessment clerk. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's so moved. And then I'd like to move the following, which I'll make into a motion. Schedule a public hearing for October 14th for the CARES Act, which is um, Community Development Block Grant application for the year 2021 program. And a little, little uh, note on this. This is a grant that Bob actually learned about. That it, originally it started off. We had a we went to the Van Tassel House to identify at least a hundred thousand dollars worth of repairs. Um, we were able to do that. While doing that, Bob find, found out about the CARES Act, and we're putting in a grant. That grant can be up to two million dollars. So we're putting in a proposal for 1.2 million um, to do rehab at the uh, Van Tassel house. 
So we're going to put that on for public hearing. Is that is the CDBG? Is that part of the CARES Act, or that's two separate things? It's part of the CARES Act. It is. Oh. Yeah. No, CARES Act is part of the CDBG. Okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. So that's okay. That's. But there are there um, sort of prerequisites that go along with the block, with the block grants. In other words, you have to do this, this, and this as well to get the money to get access to the money. We're going to hear about all of that at, at the public hearing. Okay. But um, yeah, there's always strings attached. There may be, <laughs> you know, a match, a match here or there. Right. But needless to say, you know, the Van Tassel House has turned into a very well used uh, resource. And it could use it could help. use, yeah. Okay, so um, there was before we saw. I think Bob had a letter or or a description of that. Did we get that? Because I didn't. We did. I didn't read it, but I don't think I got it. Yeah, that one right there. One point eight million dollars. Do we? Uh, yeah, that'll be part of the. That's I mean, what the public a, hearing would be. Yeah, we'll have the sent to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just I don't think I got. Okay, it. so the motion is to schedule a uh, the public hearing for next week, October fourteenth. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, item eleven: double utility pole legislation discussion. So, um, Roland has been doing some research, and. Roland, <clears throat> you had a discussion with um, Newcastle? Yeah, I spoke to the uh, Newcastle town attorney as to why uh, that municipality never adopted the double poll legislation. And <clears throat> the short answer was uh, that they found that the utilities that they deal with, which principally is Con Ed and Verizon, uh, that when they heard about the uh, proposal, uh, that they became uh, more attentive to the problem. And they've been able to work through the issues that they've had to the municipality's satisfaction. Uh, at the beginning of their discussion, uh, Con Ed was uh, a little bit litigious, but uh, that was short lived. And they now developed a pretty good working relationship on getting the double poles removed. Um, okay, and that, that was with uh, Con Edison, correct? Yeah, that's mostly Con Ed. I think it's all Con Ed down there. And it, you know, I'm just reading your memo, and that said the Public Service Commission had no opinion on the law. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, well, it's municipal. That they, they did yeah. not oppose it. They were not a PSC was not opposed to the law, but the attorney was quick <laughs> to point out when I pointed out to him my concern about having granted the the uh, uh, real estate rights many years ago. He did indicate no one has ever researched that issue. So PSC didn't look at that issue and neither did Newcastle. Okay. All right, so um, as we wind our, our way down this road to get those uh, ut double utilities uh, poles removed and based on um, Roland's update memo of uh, September 22nd, I've arranged for a meeting with uh, NYSEG uh, next Friday, uh, 1015. Um, to discuss the issue uh, of, of double poles and how, and we can discuss this issue of, um, you know, the easement, you know, uh, Roland saying basically that, you know, we've granted an easement, we can't really control what happens within that easement, but certainly NYSEG does. Um, they notify Cablevision first, then Verizon, then the pole should be removed. Um, and as we know from history here, um, those poles are not being moved on a timely basis. So we're gonna find out from NYSEG as 
Newcastle did with Con Ed, if we can get into some kind of a relationship with NYSEG on the issue um, and how the town can, can help facilitate the transfer of those wires. So uh, Rick, Altice is gonna be at the meeting on Thursday, right? John Dulligan, we can pose the question to him, you know. Oh, at we'll, the town board meeting. Yeah, at the town board on meeting. The, so we could say tomorrow we're gonna to be meeting with NYSEG. Gotcha. We need you guys to step up as well. Exactly. Awesome. It's Wednesday next week? No. Thursday. Thursday. We arranged to have in the morning? No. It'll be at a town board meeting. Oh, oh, the board meeting. Meeting. Yeah, oh. Altice is gonna be here, John Dulligan and maybe one of his uh, engineering people. So we're gonna put a list of questions. We've got a list of questions. Pop them up here, we'll get them. <laughs> yeah, don't, be nice. don't let me lose, man. Yes, yeah. that's, yes. They're here voluntarily. So. It, it, it's taken it's taken almost that long since Isai East till now to get them in front of us. Yeah, good. Hopefully they'll explain what they're gonna do with uh, you know the public service commission's order and how they're gonna make some of the changes and how they're gonna monetize them modernize their network and you know where they're going to spend money to uh that's great to improve yeah we hope and of course the uh the customer bill of rights right absolutely okay. okay all right so um yeah that once again we're working hard on that this uh this issue because it really um is a public safety issue as well there was a a garbage truck i caught up in some Cable wires on 118 closed, got into a crash, closed the road for a couple of hours. Um, you know, had those wires been relocated and Paul removed, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, I do have an add on. Uh, and speaking of uh, the Reynolds house, during this evaluation for um, the grant, a mold condition was identified in the basement. Um, we had to relocate some of the staff into a different uh, space and um and did you say Reynolds or Reynolds, uh, Reynolds or news me no fantastic yeah okay I, was gonna say, I didn't know we had staff in the yeah. Reynolds. yeah no no not, <laughs> not yet um but yeah fantastic house I, I, okay so they found this uh condition we've uh, stopped basically any kind of activity in the building so um we really want to get this taken care of quickly. So I'm going to uh, make a motion that um, the board approve going, um, not going out to bid because this is a, a professional service and it's under $30,000. We did have a company that said they could do it uh, start next week. Um, we chose them because they could start right away. Now they're hemming and hawing. Is so bidding associated with this? No, it's not a bid. So, so what I would like to do is- uh, But you have confidence in this, you, for whatever reason, that they can do it. Yeah, if, if we can get them on a, on a timely basis, this will be the company. But if I have another company that will come in, we, and we have contacted another company that's going in there tomorrow, and if they say, hey, we could start Saturday, uh, I want to be able to say you yep, got the job. Yeah, yeah, it's your, right okay, sure. so, your, your discretion. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm looking for approval to um, hire a mold remediation company and an amount not to exceed $14,000. Second. All in favor? So why don't you also do it at not, not just as a professional service, but also as an emergency measure? If you add that to your resolution. Emergency as well. Emergency measures does not take another one. I'll say that as well. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> we gotta get our seniors back in that building. Uh, yeah, we gotta get that open. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, under parks and recreation um, recreation, uh, request approval to purchase a skag mower in the amount of $11,181 on the state bid contract to replace a 1992 Kubota mower as proposed in the five-year budget um, projection per memo dated September 23rd 
from Steve Ralston, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. And we can put that on the consensus agenda. Under personnel, we have uh, board openings, uh, affordable housing, assessment board, partners in prevention, uh, acknowledge and do we acknowledge one? Yeah, we acknowledge the resignation of uh, Jamie Anderson from Parks Groundskeeper from the Somers Parks and Recreation Department, effective 10-1. Um, we wish- Oh, September. September. September 10. September 10. Um, and we wish uh, Jamie the best of luck in his future endeavors. Acknowledge the resignation of Barbara Sherry Secretary to the Town of Somers Planning Board, um, effective October 1, 2021. And Barbara will retain her secretary to the Town Superintendent of Highways, and that's a part-time availability position. But this will then free us up to be able to hire a uh, part-time Planning Board Secretary. Okay, and we do thank Barbara for her service as the planning board secretary. Oh, yeah. Proposed consensus agenda, one through five, if you have any questions or issues on that. Very straightforward. Yep, if not, um, I will announce that we begin our budget hearings mm -hmm. on October 19th and 21st. Um, they are open to the public. They will be held between 1 and 4 p.m. right here in the townhouse. And our next meeting will be October 14th, our regular meeting right here in this room. And with that, that concludes the business of the town board. Um, Patty, do you have any announcements for us? Sure. I wasn't sure you were wanting me to do them this evening. Did oh, you want to? Did you want to do number one? I could do number one. And I, that's why I said to Kim, I think you might want to do number one. I do want to do number one. I will take over from there. Thank you. And I don't have a fun fact either, so maybe you can take over for that too. Um, okay. So was it last evening? I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, last evening. The uh, Town of Somers um, was awarded, the Amawalk Shanorock Water District was, rep was presented with the 2021 Advancement Award from the Westchester Water Works Conference, Inc. for the Route 6 Water Main Loop Project. And as you recall, that was Hidden Meadows needed water, um, Somers Realty, where Artis was located, they, they were going to put, they were required to put in a million gallon holding tank. Um, Adam, who's been very much involved in uh, trying to create a loop, was able to get Somers Realty to participate in, in a connection. So we now have and pay for Adam's oh, loop. Oh, yeah. Adam's got an award for it. And here's the award. Sweet. Yeah. We can zero in on this. It read, for the Route 6 water main loop project. But as you see, I have blacked out the water main loop and put in Adam's <laughs> loop. Because that's clearly that's, that's what it was. So Adam, if it weren't for your hard work on this project, we would not have that system set up there. So thank there, you. There. Nice. There, there. nice. And with that, Adam's I'll turn it over to you, Pat. Okay, well, then the town was also awarded. Uh, the town of Somers has been chosen to receive a commendation for outstanding achievement by the Westchester Municipal Planning Federation for the Somers Planned Hamlet Project. We're getting awards everywhere. Yeah, we're just not going to cover it. Yeah, them. now this, yeah, uh, Sarad actually submitted this, um, I think, last year or the year before. And they said since it was not completed, they would not consider it. So with the building of artists, we now have a completed planned Hamlet. Oh, that's fun. And uh, so there's uh, gonna be a Zoom meeting, a Zoom uh, a ceremony. And I'll get that, that information out to you folks. Great. If you wanna participate in that. Great, good. 
The Town of Somers, uh, the Somers Lions Club Carnival is on its way. It started yesterday and it goes through to October 11th. The hours from Monday, for Wednesday and Thursday are 6 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. So you can Don't head on it. over there tonight if you'd like. And then Friday, 6 a.m. to 6, oh, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday and Sunday is 12.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Monday, which is Columbus Day, they're going to be operating from 12.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. There are wristbands available for $30 for ultimate limited unlimited rise. And there's a $2 coupon for Wednesday, Thursday, and Monday, which you can get at select stores, or it's also in the summer's record. That fair is being held at Fireman's Field on Route 202. Keep America, keep America. Keep Summers Beautiful. Town wide litter cleanup weekend is Saturday, October 16th, and Sunday, October 17th. From 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., supplies will be provided at the Elephant Hotel parking lot. There will be a deposit if you would like a litter picker and a vest. Also, it's our favorite time of the year. There's the Somers Bulk Refuge Drop Off, oh, yeah. which is operating from this Saturday, October 16th, all the way through November 13th, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturday, 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. at City Carding Recycling Center. Not this Saturday, next Saturday. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. I'm a week ahead of myself. All right. And the, de and the details will be, that'll be posted on our website. The details are posted on our website. I wasn't, you know, giving and out. That's at the recycling center. But there is a charge, you, can, you know, depending oh. on the size of your vehicle, you get charged go going in and coming out. And there is a discounted rate for Somers residents and you must have your ID. Okay. So my fun facts for tonight. <laughs> yes. In 1982, the musical Cats opened nope. in the Winter Garden Theater and ran for 18 years, finally closing on September 10th, 2020, 2000. It won seven Tonys and one Grammy Award. Now somebody, not anybody on this board, but somebody who works with us told us I could not make Yankee announcements for today because we're a little bit in mourning. <laughs> but on um, this day in 1950, the Yankees swept the Philadelphia Phillies in the 47th World Series. Whitey Ford also threw his first winning World Series game for that day, which swept that series. I had his baseball card. And then Eight. as a Paul O'Neill fan, I must say, on this day in 1988, Lou Pinella was fired, fired for the second time in the Knicks. <laughs> and as somebody who doesn't like baseball, I can say that the uh, Red Sox beat the Yankees two nights ago. Yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm still, I'm I'm still May you have a blackout. <laughs> what does Paul O'Neill have to do with that Lou Pinella thing? They do not like each other. <laughs> oh. Yes, come on. You're yeah, a Yankee right, fan, right. you don't know. I got my tie on and... Um, that, yeah. I should have worn the black version for it's morning. A, yeah. Okay. It's as, in the red. Bucky Dent was there on Tuesday. It didn't even help. Really? As is our custom. Are there any town board members that want to say anything else? Issues, concerns? I want to remind everybody to take the uh, wireless infrastructure poll. Andre, let's just kind of just, it's, it's essentially a poll that's, uh, that's going to allow you to weigh in. Like on token. wireless infrastructure facilities and macro towers and their aesthetics, your service uh, experience in town, and it's going to be very helpful to create the uh, wireless master plan. This is the poll. If you go out to the website, Somers website, right down on the bottom here, you click here, and essentially you'll get to the poll. It takes about less than five minutes. Right. But we have about 400 responders so far. We'd like to get that up to a thousand. It's and it so runs we'll through still when? a nice cross -section. October thirteenth. Okay. okay, which is next Tuesday. Yeah, I think. Well, right? Just with regard to that poll, I responded as for my household. Okay, and which you know, is, was an option. Yes, and that's a good point. I want to make mention that if you work in the town, so if let's say you're a Somers Record employee that's here. You can answer the, you know, you can participate in the poll. 
it, it, you identify yourself as somebody who works here. You no, just, but you, know, you, um, you said you only got 400 responses, but technically I've responded for five people. Well, 400 households then. Oh. Okay. And uh, I guess one other thing is mentioned, we had that shed the meds, uh, oh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, sort of day. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we had a you know, great turnout. I think they collected over 100 pounds of, uh, of, uh, of, of medications. Yeah, that's, a, that's all good. I mean, you're essentially doing two things. You're taking them off the market in some respect. And there are environmental benefits of doing that. So because you don't want to be uh, disposing them in your, you know, in your septics and whatnot, yeah, find those way, ways into the, into the water. And then uh, finally, I guess Carol and I went to the Friends of Karen uh, fundraiser this week. It's a great cause. Um, if you have an opportunity to help that cause, I think uh, it's a great thing to do. They help families and children with cancer uh, that are in need. And, um, you know, the folks at Mama Rosa always host. Yeah, they are, here. they are special people of our Friends of Karen. And they're right over in North Salem. Right? Yes. They're based. So, um uh, yeah, and anytime you get an opportunity to support them, please do. Okay. okay, we had a lot of business this evening, uh, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Good night, Somers. Good night, Somers. Good night, all. Rick, help me out with this yes. process. Rich. We've been working on it for months and months. Who has the opportunity?